So as you can see, I'm probably overwhelming you with, with a whole bunch of examples, but I wanted to do this because I think that the, the, the thing I want you to take away from this presentation perhaps is the importance of metacognitive prompts. Getting the students to consider questions, right? Because the key to this is getting students to ask the right kinds of questions of themselves. What is the state of my learning? How am I doing? Are my strategies and current study practices working? Here in this chart, I've shown how you can align, embed and align metacognitive prompts to the various stages of student learning, of the learning cycle, right? with respect to certainly metacognitive practice. So planning for learning, monitoring their learning, and then evaluating their learning. Again, I draw your attention to the questions. How am I doing? Am I on track? What did I learn? Did my results match my expectations? By simply asking or tagging questions of these kinds to existing assessments or existing activities, you can go a long way towards pointing your students in the directions we want them to go. I'm going to get a little more specific here, and I'm going to talk not in generalities, not about aligning to planning, to monitoring and evaluating but I'm going to talk about specific kinds of activities. We can try to include prompts that help students assess what they know about a topic or to get students to reflect on what they understood about the content from a previous class in terms of after a lesson. We can follow up on work that was done by asking them to identify what they didn't, what they didn't get, what they didn't understand. We can also get students to reflect on what they thought was, from a previous class, the most important concept or what was the most important takeaway. All kinds of things can be done. By, cons by implementing and, and undertaking frequent low stakes formative work, students can stay aware of uh, their level of learning and go some way towards strengthening what it is they know and getting a sense for what it is they don't know, right? Which will enable, better enable them to target the work that is ahead. Frequent, what do I mean by frequent? Probably many of you are doing this already, but by having a weekly quiz or discussion forums or even pre-class quizzes that have met, embedded metacognitive elements to them, maybe they're not the focus, but there are additional questions or prompts, and maybe for no stakes, maybe, maybe no points. But they get students, again, reflecting on the most important aspects of what it is they're trying to achieve. Can help reduce student confusions, can help students evaluate their performance, and can provide students an opportunity to begin to plan for what's next, to plan for their learning as this is vital for students who are going to be successful in our courses. Another example, and here we are really specific, I was thinking of concept mapping and that type of thing and, and how it is that you might begin to incorporate metacognitive components into that. Um, and so I thought about, uh, and then, you know, I took a specific example from a specific discipline, but I thought, I thought about this and I think it's, it's easy to do because we do these kinds of tests in class or online all the time, right? We ask students to, to map or to diagram something and they do this as a means to test the student, to, to, to test their awareness or understanding of a particular concept or a particular theory. Um, and so I thought, well, let's take one of those kind of small scale tests, a formative assessment, and let's see if we can't make that a metacognitive activity or an activity with metacognitive elements to it. And so here I thought about, let's do a concept map, act map activity. So the students are tasked with mapping a circular economy, 
Now that's an economic system that tackles global challenges like climate change, biodiversity loss, and so on. Um, and so you could begin by asking students to draw and label a diagram of this, this circle from production through consumption, through recycling, and on and on. And you would ask them to do this without looking at their notes. Now, as I said, it's a test of a kind, but we can make this activity metacognitive. And we do that by asking specific kinds of follow-ups. So the assignment would look something like what I've got up on the screen here for you. The student tests themselves, but the follow-up encourages the students to look at the test as a self-test, something that enables them to identify what do they know, what were they able to remember, um, and to identify what it is they don't know. So that way they'll know better what to learn next. This could go some way towards boosting what they already know, what they have remembered, and also what it is they have yet to learn. So you could add to that additional steps, right? We could encourage students to create a writing, a written plan. How will you close your learning gaps? How will you fill those holes in terms of what you knew and didn't know? And it's also an opportunity to bring forward those student plans and to discuss it as a, as a class so that we can compare and con contrast different strategies. And we can discuss this as a group and students can adjust and make, make assessments based on their own learning needs, as well as um, what their own learning goals are with respect to the particular course. Summative assessments. It is possible to embed metacognitive prompts into, into summative assessments. Uh, I give you a couple of examples. Scaffolded assessments. I, um, I'm a big believer in taking large summative assessments and breaking them into smaller progressive assessments. So rather than single assessment, you create multiple components, multiple assignments to form a scaffolded assessment. These tend to give you better opportunity to give feedback to students with respect to performance, but it's also an opportunity for you to engage through forward-feeding forward -feeding feedback um, with the students metacognitively to encourage them to think about what is yet to come. Uh, the other thing that I like to consider with respect to metacognitive practice tied to summative assessment, wraparounds. Summative assessment wraparounds. Now, these wraparounds can be prior to the assessment or post-assessment, but essentially what you're doing is encouraging students to begin to plan for, to anticipate what they need to learn, what they need to do to be prepared for a particular assessment. And then post-assessment, you want them to begin to think about, to evaluate their learning, their success, and if necessary, to revise their plans. So these are things that I would encourage you to think about. Um, but if you want to know more about these things and want to spend a little more time with respect to some of the assessments and the relationship of assessments and metacognition to learning outcomes, I probably will explore this a little more fulsomely in my upcoming webinar on March 2nd. And that is outcomes are a lot like Lego blocks, framing outcomes and assessments for students. So hopefully um, you liked what you saw today and saw and heard today. Uh, and you would like to come back. So I look forward to seeing you again. Uh, today, I'm going to end with us returning to Calvina and Hobbes just quite quickly. Hobbes, as I said, is our model. She is our model because she displays the characteristics of a self-regulating learner. And these are the very skills we want to encourage our students to develop. Unfortunately, I don't think we can achieve this by providing them in a single lecture or by assigning a reading or, or, or some such thing. Instead, explicit routine supports, such as the metacognitive prompts I've talked about, 
are probably what's going to be required if we, if we, can, if we want to give students the space and the time to learn to think and to talk about, the about their learning.